Welcome back, everybody, for some more AoE 2 DE custom campaigns, although this one is a historical battles. And it is brought by the HC production team. I'm not too sure who entirely that encompasses, but this was uploaded by Joshua Bright, who just, uh, we just did Belisarius from him. Uh, but this has five scenarios, so let's see what we got here. This is one sword, and it is Grand Prince Oleg, 882. Uh, after the death of the founder of the Rurik dynasty, the throne of the Grand Prince of, and the youngest son, Igor, were entrusted to Oleg. How will the new Grand Prince use the power of the Varangians to conquer the Slavic towns along the Dnieper River, and the Varangians can truly integrate into the Rus nation? In this scenario, you will play as the Slavs with a Viking style. On the vast expanse of the eastern and uh, European wilderness, the sky at dusk was dyed blood red by the soaring firelight. Pigeons and finches, bound with flaming strips of cloth in, on their legs, jumped up and down, setting the Drevlin's fragile hut on fire. From time to time, the shrill but increasingly weak screams of women and children could be heard in the city, and the Rus soldiers could not help frowning. Uh, something, something... This beautiful woman is called Olga. She is the wife of the last Grand Prince of Rus, Igor, and the regent of the current Grand Prince, her one-year-old son. Igor was killed by the Drevlin Drevlians uh, during a tribute collection a few months ago. Avenging her husband is the greatest wish of this strong woman, and now she has finally done it. She closed her eyes and recalled what she had been through with her husband. When she was 12 years old, she married Igor, who was still young at the time. Over the years, they had not only a good relationship, but Olga had shown an amazing talent for political affairs and diplomacy, often helping her husband solve problems. And the one who arranged the marriage was the previous Grand Prince, Oleg. Oleg is the younger brother of Igor's father, Rurik. Rurik was originally a Varangian. After being invited to Slavia, he created the great Rurik dynasty. However, Rurik died young. In order to protect his youngest son, Igor, he entrusted the position of Grand Prince to Oleg, hoping that he could assist his son and maintain the status of the new country. Oleg was a valiant warrior, no less than Rurik. Although he is a regent, he has little interest in intriguing power struggles. His only interest was conquest, grabbing more territory from his neighbors. Not long after Oleg ascended the throne, he felt deeply about Novgorod's geographical constraints and set his sights on the city of Kiev on the Dnieper River, which was also ruled by the Varangians. Oleg first went into the vast fields of the dark forests of Eastern Europe, forcing the Drevlians to, there to pay tribute. The name Drevlians is derived from the Slavic... I don't know what that means, uh, which means tree. Uh, these tribes living in wooden houses had to submit to Oleg's force, but the seeds of hatred had been buried in their hearts. After forcing the Drevlians to provide logistical supplies, Oleg began his plan of conquest. He sent messages to the city of Kiev and invited the Grand Prince Askold from there to meet him out of the city. Seeing that Oleg was also a Varangian, Askold went to the banquet without any doubt. He had no idea that he had fallen into Oleg's trap. What had waited on him was not a feast of wine, but soldiers in full armor. Holding the young Igor, Oleg shouted to Askold, The Varangians only need one king. Now the real Grand Prince is here, and you should disappear from Kiev. Uh-oh, Spaghetti-O. I am going to forget all of that. But, you know, you're all used to that at this point. Did I remember to uh, change my options? I really don't want to have to read that again. Oh, we still have small trees on. You know what? I don't care how unprofessional this is. I'm gonna turn small trees off. Audio settings are right. This is what happens when you're a caster and a campaign maker guy. No, campaign recorder playthrougher. Diplomatic Corps. Uh, assassin in an ox cart. The city of Kiev is just ahead. Hopefully the messenger can successfully persuade Askold to return to our camp, so I don't have to do it myself. It is naturally best to be able to enter the city directly as an envoy. However, if there is a situation deviates from deployment, we must leave a way out. Even if we lose our lives, we must kill the Grand Prince of Kiev. Whoa, we're fast. Oh, crap. Uh, are you the messenger from Novgorod? Our Grand Prince is not someone who you can see if you want to. If you want to enter the city, you must pay gold first. Well, you have 1,300. I heard that the Kyoba people occupy the land of the Dnieper for a long time, and they thought they were superior. I didn't expect that even mere guards would try to dare blackmail the envoy. Um, okay. Ah, you are quite a compliment. You can go in now. 
Okay, there's Askold. And there's a merchant. Some berserks. A messenger sent by Oleg. What did he want to do with me? Uh, dear Grand Prince Askold, our predecessor, Grand Prince of Novgorod, just passed away. Grand Prince Oleg has come to visit shortly after he ascended the throne, hoping to discuss matters with you. I also deeply regret the passing of Grand Prince Rurik. For the sake of everyone being Varangians, I will go see your new Grand Prince. Whoa. Uh, greetings, Askold. It seems like Kiev is indeed a good place. I can see your clothes have become a lot more gorgeous. What are you doing with so many soldiers around Oleg? Get them out of here. It's time for a new owner of Kiev. Rest assured, I will fulfill my obligations as a Varangian and establish a unified country. Do you just die in peace? Oh no, if you kill me, Kiev won't let you go. Oh no. Rip. Askel, there will be no obstacle uh, to our conquest of the Dnieper. Follow me, warriors of the Varangian. Let's march uh, to Kiev. My lord, we will serve you. Oh boy. Um... There is a lot going on here. Conquer zero to four cities. Convert the church in Kiev or defeat Kiev. Build a wonder in the city of Smolensk or defeat Smolensk. Make a uh, rich says military population less than five. Make Lubech's civilian population less than eight. Protect the Varangians eight cyan from being defeated. Norse warriors no longer have plus one attack and minus twenty percent. Oh, okay. Uh, enter 200 the chat box within 20 seconds to skip the level, which is used to obtain gold medals after saving. Okay, I'm not sure what that is. Their population cap is 175 and can be increased to 200. Oleg is a Varangian, so he has some characteristics of the Vikings. Infantry HP, he has bracers, thumb ring. <laughs> um, and Arbalester loses Halib and Bloodline, and you can hire powerful Norse warriors trained in the Imperial Era barracks. There are special uh, tactics in the castle. There are many ways to assassinate Askold, such as entering from the main entrance, uh, or sneak in and kill him directly. Okay, well, we just killed him. Choosing different assassination methods will affect the subsequent development. If the Varangian Guard were to kill Askold themselves, they would be satisfied and fight more actively. It is not necessary to conquer the city by completely defeating it. Different cities have their own weaknesses. You can make it subordinate... Uh, okay... Not orthodox yet, so we can only train priests at a shrine. Did not take any boatmen with the army, so we have to cross by land. Oleg is set up on the other side of the Dnieper. We've got assassins. Um, Kiev is the most powerful city and has stuff. Smolink has, has stuff. Rechitsa has stuff, and Lubich has stuff. The Drevlians are the objects Oleg can win. Um, okay. We are in the castle age. We have a pop limit of at least 175 right now. So let's get cracking, shall we? So you can make Berserks. Walled City. Doesn't say what it does. The Teenets and Berserker Gang. Yeah, that seems kind of lame. Okay, so here are the Varangians, which I guess are going to help us out. So we can train the Norse guys from the barracks in the Imperial Age. How good are they? 14 attack, 96 HP, 2 2 armor. That is what I would call good. Don't panic. Even if our Grand Prince is killed by the Sinister and Cunning Novgorods, with our solid city defenses, we can resist them to the end. So, my guess is that we would be best served going after these, uh, Drevlians. So, what do I do for these guys? Hello! have different buffs by building specific buildings in the neutral village we'll... which one do i have to build here I, I see the area where i am supposed to build something 
Нас готово. Да. Да. Okay, I guess I can't do anything with that right now. Let's just go find someone to fight. Uh, Oleg doesn't have to survive, I think. Eh, we're just running around with our army. Um, oh, okay. Oh boy. Um at the flag. Can I add zero side they're currently at zero side tribes destroyed. Now it's okay. Build a trade workshop to gain economic bonus. Pop cap plus five, gold per second plus five trade, tax rate times point eight, trading and efficiency plus ten percent, farmland yield plus thirty. Pop cap plus five. Okay, so both give you it pop cap. Infantry at Attack speed increase, movement speed plus two percent. Lose. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, there's the shrine. Here's the trade workshop. Let's get our economic bonuses going. Seems like a fun scenario. Pretty creative. Hello, Smolensk. Sure. Thank you very much. We will support you financially as long as we're you're willing to provide protection. Okay. Ringians are building a castle. Build a shrine in this one. I have absolutely no thought given to <laughs> which ones I'm going to do. Let's get a trade workshop in this one. And let's get a shrine in this one. We'll have two economic boosts and three military boosts. That seems appropriate. And we should be getting up to 200 population as well. Anyway. Um... What does Walled City do? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Okay, you can come back home. I mean, this is only a one sword difficulty scenario. So I imagine this is just going to be a straightforward boom into smash them in the uh, Imperial Age. Hey, stop it, you! What are you doing, jerk faces? Let's 
Okay. Oh, holy crap. We have a lot of HP on our town centers. Okay, I guess that's what Bald City does. Okay. No, oh leg. We were too young to die. Okay, let's get you. Increase our berserk count. Oh yeah, let's get to tea nuts. And spam castles everywhere. We do get a, a trade bonus. I'd like to find some gold. Found it. Oleg has returned to the battlefield. Okay, let's try and save these guys. Stop it, you jerk face! Come on. Come on, there Oh no! Don't do that! I didn't realize they'd be trapping me already. Come on, save it. Oh, it has 4,900 HP. That's why it's not destroyed yet. It's still gonna go down. Rip. Ripperino. And now we only have 195 max pop limit. Do you have a cheap siege still? Yes, we do. Let's get you. Oh, we get Drusina. And we get the Norse warriors. Uh, what you do in their home slice? Oh, you get Chieftains and Drusina. We're gonna have some OP as hell infantry. Whoa, 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 whoa. Boy. Oh, what's the hockey for you guys? You guys don't get a hockey. Awesome. Uh, Varangians are in the Imperial Age, which is nifty. Let's get a castle over here near our allies. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Let's get some better lumber camps. Okay, we got our elite berserks in. Get siege ram. Richitsa. Richitsa. Uh, that one is just Berserk Gang. Anyway, our OP Berserks are pretty OP. Oh, Konex. Slavs don't have Konex. Okay, there's you, bitch. Anyway, this seems pretty straightforward. Oh, we have plus five. Let's get some Trebs in here. Now, building a wonder sounds incredibly expensive, so let's just try and kill these guys. Incoming Bracer. Anyway, going to town on these guys. What you jerk face? Anyway, we've got our Slav Viking combo dream team. Oh, got some stone over here we can take. Crop rotation. Oh, more gold over here. Anyway, we're going to town on the town of Small Lanes. Okay, looks like there's not a whole heck of a lot over this way. Oh, how much more of the city is there? Here's Lubit. Hey, don't you do that. Damn, Novgorod, don't you feel ashamed of your predecessor? Uh, just the, the Grand Prince just died and you came out and invaded? Brought their resources to other cities. Oh, okay, so they resigned, but they gave, they slung all their resources to their allies, essentially. I don't really care, I'm steamrolling everything. Okay, Lubitsch, it is their villager population. They have 32 right now. Oh, there's also Rekitsia. Rekitsa. I cannot pronounce that.
Oh, those are not uh, typical Slav Cav Archer upgrades. But it's cool that they gave the uh, the enemy faction some unique identity. Start with that. Don't see any villagers yet. Well, this is a fun little power trip. You guys have a market over here or something? You guys have a market? Okay, there's a market over here. So we can trade. Okay, no, let's go over here. Because we do have increased trade efficiency. I don't see where the church in Kiev is. Okay, they have 31 villagers. Oh. Let's keep going. Oh, here's uh, a leg. No new castle for you. After the bills. Oh, there's another one. Well, I am thankfully much faster than the bills. Three more bills. Then we go into Rakitsa. Nine. No. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, during this period of time, we have not consolidated the city's defense. It makes us inevitably lose to Novgorod. Okay, so they are slinging their allies too. Now, with these guys, we have to destroy their army. Don't really need that many villagers. Nine army. There we go. We surrender to roll Varangians. Why don't we sit and talk? Yeah, that's right. Ch -ch -ch -ch. 
So well, now I need to get out. Uh, open, please. Wait, what? Is that that weird gate bug? Okay, now on to Kiev. Oh. Lick is back. Uh, of course, this castle is still here. I mean, I could get myself a, uh... Oh, boy. I don't even see the shrine I have. What? Attack! Whoa! Ah, there it is. Well, I'm way too lazy to try and convert that. Come on, let's get it moving. Kiev is definitely the strongest of our enemies, but that's why we save them for last. So it's just us and them. There we go. Wow, these guys are actually still mining. <laughs> I thought they would have been killed ages ago. Oh, dang it. That's just a mill. But we should be on the victory path here. Looks like Sand's been uh, pretty helpful all game. <laughs> we accidentally destroyed the church. Oopsies! Oops, I did it again. When Britney Spears accidentally joins the game. Okay, there goes that castle. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it would have been easier to just convert the monastery since we we're attacking from the other side anyway. Oh, well. Time to die. Where are you at, Oleg? Here you are.
Go get him! We're almost there. But I like the scenario. It wasn't very hard, but it was a fun little power trip. I like the uh, creative, you know, combining of civs with Slavs and Vikings. That is, like, you know, very appropriate for Varangians. The cities were different. It had some interesting mechanics with the uh, Drevlians. Yeah, so it was a good, good start to this. I don't mind a scenario being on the easier side if it's, like, well done. I recognize that not everybody, you know, is a hardcore AOE 2 player like I am. And Slavs and Vikings are uh, good sibs for doing these sorts of scenarios. Lots of booming, lots of smashing your opponents with strong Imperial Age armies. I mean, Vikings have a terrible post if but they have Berserks. And those are fun. Yeah, I like the cities, they're all pretty unique. <laughs> I like how we're not really conquering Kiev so much as leveling Kiev. <laughs> we're erasing it from the map. But yeah, we're conquering it, all right. Yeah, there's so much of these cities left to uh, to govern. <laughs> okay, green still has a little bit of stuff left in it. Sorry, Mr. Merchant. You were probably one of the ways I could have assassinated the dude in the beginning, but uh, I'm afraid your time has come. And the Hogger's sign any moment. There we go. The Novgorods have taken our city. Yeah, you bet. Um. Why is the small achievement of general costs lives? They have to manage the cities along the deeper river well to build a truly unified country in order to be worthy of the Varangian warriors who fought on the battlefield. A little worried because the uh, the Spolon subjective didn't check off, but I guess that's uh, not an issue. The leaders of List Kiev hardly made any decent resistance and fell in front of Oleg's army, but Oleg was not in a hurry to move to the capital. Taking advantage of the momentum of occupying Kiev, he successfully conquered Smolensk, Rekitsa, and Lyubich, and the other cities in the spring of 882, completely controlling the rich land along the Dnieper River. With Oleg's decades of operation, the political situation in Novgorod was stable, the Drevlians uh, handed in the tribute with reverence and awe, and the rest of the Slavic tribes also surrendered. Seeing the time was right, Oleg moved the capital to Kiev. He believed that the city would make the country of the Rus stronger. Since then, the prototype of Kievan Rus uh, has been formed, so Oleg is regarded as the first Grand Prince of the Kievan Rus. But Oleg was still not satisfied. He wanted to show off his might to the powerful Byzantine Empire in the east and get more wealth from the Romans. Sure enough, when he led uh, the army straight to the city walls of Constantinople, the Byzantine Emperor immediately proposed a peace proposal and offered trade treaty with the extremely beneficial to Oleg. Oleg accepted the Byzantine tribute and went back contentedly. Oleg had a favored horse, and this beautiful war horse accompanied him on all expeditions. Therefore, when it died of old age, the sad Oleg wanted to see it for the last time in person. However, a poisonous snake uh, suddenly sprang out from the skull of the beloved horse and bit Oleg's arm. A few days later, he died of poisoning. Oh, boy. Ugh. 
But the greed for power and wealth didn't go with Oleg's death. The next Grand Prince, Igor, inherited Oleg's legacy, planned an expedition to Byzantium, and continued to surpass, suppress the Drevlians. Although he also achieved a lot of victories for a while, his inflated ambitions would eventually bring disaster. He was killed, by ta killed while taxing the Drevlians in 945, leaving his one-year-old son in the same situation as his father. Fortunately, this time, his capable and shrewd wife, Olga, was there to turn the tide, but uh, not to do anything more than three times when the Rus paid the price for their greed again. Can anyone go on to save them? Who knows, man. Anyway, that's a pretty good KD. Pretty good buildings raised uh, ratio. Yeah, I enjoyed that scenario. It was interesting. Don't think we missed anything on the map. Yep, 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 yep. Horsey. I guess that's Oleg's horse. Nice little Easter egg. Yeah, map looks nice. Get the Dnieper River here. All right, guys. That was Grand Prince Oleg 882. And next up will be a nice throwback to Tomislav, the Battle of the Bosnian Highlands in 926. See you guys next time for that one.